You're listening to Side by Side with Kathy Wilson. Episode 9, Getting to Know You. Ralph and I sat on the garden bench overlooking our private portion of paradise. The waterfall splashed into the fish pond, making its own serenade. We sipped our coffee and savored the beauty around us. There, blooming in riotous color, danced the daffodils, tulips, and lilacs. The floral rainbow was irresistible, and the only thing that could lure my attention from morning coffee. We were both watching Hickory exploring her new domain. Well, I breathed a silent prayer of gratitude. My husband seemed happy to have me back and was willing to accept the new member of our family. This was the day after my return from the school. It was a new chapter for us. On this, our first day, all seemed well. We were wrapped in the peace of the garden and laughing as Ralph related Hickory's discoveries to me. She's on the trail now. Looks like she's determined to catch something. Oh, no, Ralph, do you think it could be a skunk? If there were a skunk, we would have sniffed it out long ago. No sooner had these words left Ralph's lips when a wild scramble passed a few feet in front of us. Was that white streak hickory? I asked as the commotion rushed away to the other end of our property. Yes, that was hickory. She's quite a runner. With any luck, those rabbits will steal someone else's tulips now. It could be risky for them dining at the Wilsons with Hickory on the lookout. I think I might have seen Hickory, but not the rabbit. Was it a big one? It would have been a generous snack for Hickory, and it would have fed with no end of pleasure on the flowers had Hickory not intervened. Now I think of it. I'd like to plant some tomatoes and green beans. Maybe Hickory will discourage our unwanted guests. That would be great. Labradors are supposed to be fine hunters. Hope she doesn't want to eat her snack in the living room. Did she catch it? During all the days I had spent at the school with Hickory, she had not been interested in the wildlife of Oakville. Well, perhaps this is not strictly true. Our class had been walking along the lake shore after dinner. The evening had been warm and resplendent in a scarlet sunset. We had asked the instructors if we could have an evening walk. As Hickory and I strolled along the waterfront, we were assaulted by a large, noisy, and extremely angry Canada goose. She marched right up, waving her wings about, squawking all kinds of insults, and Hickory didn't like it one bit. Greg told me to get Hickory out of there because the goose was guarding her nest. I gave Hickory orders, which she completely ignored. I pulled at her, but it took Greg to finally settle this declaration of war. That goose would have made quite a snack as far as the brave white hunter was concerned. When we were out of range of Mother Goose, Greg told Hickory, Don't mess with geese. You wouldn't win. It appeared that, like the goose, the free-loading rabbit had won the skirmish because it got away. My intrepid hunter lost her quarry, yawned, and returned to my side. She seemed content to settle down for a nap in the sun while the waterfall sent a sparkling cascade, playing its own sweet song. It wasn't long before Ralph was once more exclaiming, Oh, Kathy, that blasted rabbit has come back. No, I think it's a cousin or aunt. It doesn't look as big. No sooner had Ralph made this announcement than Hickory's slumbers came to an end and she was sitting up and looking around. Ralph laughed. Away she goes. Maybe she'll get lucky this time. I heard the sound of Hickory rushing over the grass and Ralph watched the hot pursuit. Truth to tell, I was not sad when the rabbit made its getaway through a hole in the back fence and it turned into our neighbor's problem. Hickory sought our bench again to resume her nap, but suddenly stopped and inspected the waters of the fish pond. She's looking at the goldfish. Maybe I should get her a fishing pole. Ralph thought then added that this would be a strange consolation when Hick had preferred a rabbit only a few minutes before. 
Wouldn't you have to supply her with a fishing license, too? I asked, enjoying this imaginative interlude. No, this is a private fishing hole. Furthermore, it is privately stocked with fish, so Hick can be free to fish to her heart's content. Ralph seemed positive about this, and besides, who would consider issuing a permit to a Labrador? Around and around our tiny pond she moved. Every minute or so she searched the water looking for flashes of orange. This pond was four feet deep, eight feet long, and five feet wide. It had taken me a long time to dig that hole. I was proud of its water lilies, waterfall, and darling goldfish. My fondest hope was that a frog would come and make a home there. She continued to circle the pond while Ralph grew curious about what might happen next. She's waiting for the fish to come out and introduce themselves. Maybe she is hoping that you will give some fries to go with them. We both laughed at that idea. Ralph was remembering Hickory's impromptu French fry snack during our drop-off. Of course, it had to happen. Knowing full well how much labs love the water, I should have anticipated what would occur next, but I didn't. One minute she was at the pond's edge, and the next instant she was splashing in the pond with her head covered in duckweed and tendrils of water lily hanging from her ears. Splish splash she was having a bath. Columns of water flew everywhere. What a refreshing dip, she thought, as she dog paddled over to the waterfall. I don't think your fish were expecting that. Shall I get her out? Ralph was entirely amused. If you do, she'll get you all wet. I better get a towel. Those poor fish. Hickory leapt and made mayhem in our pond, but quickly jumped out when I called her. Before she could get Ralph or I very wet, I covered her in a towel and thoroughly dried her coat. You loopy Labrador, fish ponds are for fish. Ralph put more water into the pond to replace what Hickory splashed out. He counted the fish. No casualties, everybody swimming about. Maybe she just fell in. Oh, I doubt it. Whatever she does, you can be sure she intended to do it. She's going to keep you on your toes. It should get quite interesting. No doubt about that, I smiled. This place suits me well, Hickory decided. Cat could be a bit more generous with the treats. I shall have to suggest it. <laughs>